I thought that was like a take on Pennywise, but I guess I was wrong. Sorry, Matt. Terrifier no, 1. I just, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. So now I'm excited to watch Terrifier 2. And, you know, I, I probably won't go to a theater to see it. But, Jeremy, was it worth going to the theater for? I was genuinely surprised how many small children were there. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Christmas movie after all. <laughs> right. <laughs> you are listening to Trophy Horse with your hosts, Tricky Mick, Alex, I Yield to No One, Sid, and Ender Phoenix. And welcome to Show of Yours. This is episode 634. I'm your host, Ricky Vick, alongside with me, the man, the myth, the legend. And he's the guy saying this show is probably going to be late. It's Alex. No, I just said if it takes me too long to edit it, because Tricky doesn't doesn't care if I have to edit, uh, then it's not going to be my fault. But another platinum trophy down, and uh, I'm uh, I'm getting into spooky season. I got I got a new game I've been playing, and I'm, I'm excited to talk about it. He's the man who doesn't care about trophies, but cares about bird and everything and fire it's matt what was it a couple weeks ago i was playing uh link's awakening and i got the fire rod and the literal line was now you can burn it burn it all down and he's the man who uh well it's a guest um and i just screwed up his intro because i was going to do a dale and hurt reference but that didn't really work out jeremy how are you doing i'm doing all right man uh I'm also uh, getting into the spooky spirit. Just went and saw Terrifier 3 with the wife. Had dinner. Gave it okay. a good night. So I'm going to jump in here because I literally just watched Terrifier 1 today. First oh time God. seeing it. <laughs> okay, can I pause one second? Yep. Is Terrifier the clown that kind of looks like he has like a plastic face? It's Art the Clown. It's white and black paint. Yes, sir. Because I've been I've been seeing a meme. It's Art the Clown. Yes, he's he's got he's dressed in white and black, which and I, he's got which like I a little is meant black to top hat. It's, it's, it's okay, yeah, meant okay. to accentuate the blood in those movies. Okay, I, I, the only reason I ask is because there's been like a clown meme that's been popping up where it's like he's got a real scary face and then he just turns to the camera and smiles, and I didn't know who the hell that was. I do have to say, I hope you ate dinner before you went to see Terrifier, there, Jeremy. I saw. I definitely ate dinner after the fact because I had a terrible feeling, and uh, <laughs> yeah, my suspicions were correct because yeah, the second one. I know you said you've seen just the first one. The second one is it. It amps it up just a little bit more, and then you get to the third one, and it's just somehow even tops that one. So yeah, use your imagination. It's rough, but <laughs> I don't know. After the first one and the hacksaw, I was. Kind of like, all right, what else can Spoilers. they Spoilers! All, all I'm going to say is just just wait. Well, <laughs> you definitely got to watch you, the other two. You can confirm this. Did they pass out barf bags? They, that was a thing that they did, I know, during the premiere, yes. I actually have a picture I could send everybody that, uh, that they hung outside the movie theater. I'll have to try to read it here directly when I pull it up on my camera, what it said. But I was surprised. It said... Yeah, because due to the violent uh, nature and gore in Terrifier Three, ID is required to purchase ticket. You have to be seventeen with valid ID to watch, and if you aren't, you had to have a chaperone stay with you the entirety of the movie. Yeah, a friend of mine went to see it, and he talked about how much he enjoyed it. Enjoyed it basically, you know how it amps up everything, and just really how they get more into story, whereas previously they weren't a lot into storytelling. Where he kind of does a better job with that in the newest movie, but he did say that there was barf bags, and I was just kind of curious if that was something he made up just for effect. No, that's, to my knowledge, that's all true. I'm also talking why about have I never heard who... of this movie? What? I said, why have I never heard about this movie? I, see, so that's my thing, is I didn't really hear about it until recently. Maybe I saw, uh, you know, when I went to Spirit Halloween last year, the Art the Clown animatronic. But I never really cared to to look into it further. And then this year, hearing all the hoopla about the third one coming out, and yeah, that people walked out, and again, those articles may have been a little misleading. I said, you know, as a horror enthusiast, I think it's sad that I haven't like really actually sat down 
to watch them. So I, I really made an effort. I threw it on today. I just watched it. And man, you, like you said, first one, not very much on the story. And the acting was as expected in a, in a first of the series. <laughs> so I'll be interested to see how uh, that moves on in, in yep. two and three. They definitely try to incorporate more of a story in, in the second one. And then obviously more in the third one, then too, they do the same. And it's just, it's over the top. It's ridiculous. But I mean, if you're, a, if you're a horror fan, like, like you say, like you say you are. And like I am, I mean, you'll, you'll love it, man. This, this movie came out eight years ago and only got a 5.6. Yeah, it, it was, it very, <laughs> listen, it's a down to earth horror movie and i wouldn't even know i hard to say horror more like slasher movie but For sure it definitely leans into the horror near the end of the first movie because of things that happen and then uh i like i said i'll i'll watch two here in the next week or so tis the season and then you know i'll probably hit the three when it comes on to uh direct a video wow all right all right so I guess this is a perfect time to do our audio before I turn the show over to Matt. So, Matt and Alex, do you have your pen and paper ready? Yep. I hope, yep. I hope something you did, some, you, did, you picked something in the spirit of the season, Tricky. Uh, I give no clues. But, Alex, this time when I ask you to reveal your aunt, put your answer up, do not show it to the camera until I tell you to flip it. I do what I want. Don't tell me how to live my life. Jeremy, are you ready? Because you're going to answer first uh, after after everybody's answered, just because you don't have your camera on. Yep. Okay. All right. Here we go. Was that Alex? You, you expected that to stump us? I mean, I, I don't want to make anyone else feel bad if they couldn't get it. But I, I wasn't trying to stump anybody. But you're like, oh, before the no. show, were like, you were like, oh, you, this is going to get everybody. You made it sound like it was going to be tough. I think it's tough. All right. Do you have so you have your answers? Put you, put them up. Do not show the answers to the camera. Jeremy, what is your answer? Uh, this is Halloween. Uh, I think it's Danny Elfman. All right, Alex, show your answer. It's from A Night Before Christmas. Yes. All, all three of you got it. See, I, I mean, I, that's, an, that's an obvious one for me. I mean, that's even more fitting. I just got back from Disney and met Jack Skellington and um, mm. all that there. They had the uh, Mickey, the Mickey Halloween party. So, I mean, that's fresh in my mind. So, <laughs> But not so all spooky. Right, all, right, all right. All right. All right. You know what? Since you all got that one, I got one more set up. Don't you? You guys don't have to write this one down. Just. Just wait until the end. All right. If you guys don't get this one, I'm turning this show off and I'm per turning this podcast around. End your precious field trip. Jepsen, Alex, don't say it, it's the Carly Ray Jepsen version of it. <laughs> okay, Alex, don't say nothing. Matt, you look a little puzzled. I got nothing. Jeremy, do you know what it is? Yeah, it's the the, the song for Full House. Yeah, you everywhere go. you look. Yeah. Okay. I didn't get it. At, I didn't know it at first, to be honest. It, it after a few seconds, though, it it caught on. All right, Alex was a little stumped for a second. No, it, well, yeah, but then I got. It's like oh, okay, I, I it started to go. Yeah, it came around to me, but. Right. I do appreciate that so, you pulled out the night before Christmas right before Halloween. I, I do appreciate that. Well, I was actually going to save it for like two more weeks to actually do it like on Halloween. Well, then just like pick like Friday the 13th or Halloween or something for the next one. No, because then you're going to look for that. I got to I got to try to stump you guys. No, you, you should pick things that we all might know, like popular songs. But then, you know, just because it's in a different form that it could stump us. 
Your goal is not to stump us, Drakey. Just get... No, my goal is to stump you. It's not a very fun so, game, then. For the record, the official scores are now Yield 3, Alex 3, Matt 1. Wow, Jeremy can't even be official, huh? Well, <laughs> Jer- Jeremy's got one too, but you know, I-, I wasn't trying to make Matt feel bad for being tired. Hey, man, Jeremy, when Jeremy you, you got a hundred percent effect rate, so <laughs> you're good. I do, I do what I can. <laughs> um, yeah. So there you go, uh, Matt. The show is now yours, sir. All right. Well, don't go anywhere, Tricky, because you have to give me your updated trophy counts. Uh, that would help if I had the. Oh man, you're really two, pulling it out. Two weeks in a row. Yeah, pulling it out. Well, no, because I, I I have like I have a couple tabs open for Terrifier. I am level nine hundred fifty eight total trophies up thirty three thousand eight hundred four with nine hundred seventy six plats. I didn't earn one trophy all week. Hey, we have something in common, Alex. I am level five hundred ten at total trophy count of ten thousand one hundred fifty five, and as I alluded to earlier, another platinum one hundred seventy nine platinums in one hundred seventy eight games. Sweet. Guild is level 518 with 10,581 trophies with 196 platinums. I am stagnated at level 220, 1,318 trophies, zero platinums. Uh, You know, I thought I'd have something else to report out. What the heck was my latest one? Uh, No, no, I'll go into it when I talk about what i've been playing uh sid is level 120 with 340 trophies and four platinums and jeremy sir do you have your trophies up yes i am level 405 trophy count of 6362 platinum count of 53 nice okay and with that go ahead oh i'm sorry i forgot to do something before i turn the show to you so jeremy obviously you're listening to the show uh i try to ask our guests like the first time they come on the show how did you find the show and what do you enjoy in uh, about the show. Well, I would say I've probably been listening for I would say probably about six years now, something like that. Um, I I used to be a hardcore into trophy hunting. I am not so much anymore. I'm more on the PC side lately. Um, but I was at work. I used to weld at work, and I would just pop earbuds in, and I was always trying to find. Uh, podcast to pass the time and this was one i stumbled upon and it's been a weekly listen ever since you weren't here for the donny days were you uh no You're a good man dang has donny been man. gone that long i mean i guess what he's been like 2017 or 2016 was when he i think it's 2016 when he actually left the show uh shortly after 200 is when he left because i remember it was in between. I was living with my my dad and stepmom while my house was being built. So I remember like going on walks down the road at my dad's house, like listening to the show. And uh, and I think that's when yeah, Donnie left soon after that, or was around that time. So yeah, going on like actually eight years ago. Well, Jeremy, I'm glad you didn't get the Donnie days. There there was plenty of entertainment value in the Donnie days. Uh, Will wants to know, Jeremy, what are you wearing? What am I wearing? That's what we're and make it sound sexy. <laughs> Hilariously enough, I am wearing an Austin 316 t-shirt. Can I get a hell yeah? <laughs> hell yeah. What? Exactly. All right. So with that, as our guest, you have the honor of telling us what you've been playing, Jeremy. You don't have to limit it to just this past week. Regale us with anything and everything you find interesting. Yeah, I would say, yeah, definitely this past week, I I was away on vacation, so I don't think I've earned a trophy in... A little bit of time um as you like to bring up about the steam achievements i think my latest steam achievement was today um, i i just fired up the the new silent hill 2 remake and i got about 25 minutes into that and then had to go to dinner so i didn't get to play as much as i would have liked to but uh yeah that's what i've been playing pretty much okay i I like how he just rolled right past my troll (laughs) Yeah, because it wasn't a very good troll. Oh no, I heard, I heard you, I heard you. <laughs> I know what I'm saying. I'm glad you heard it. It just, you, it didn't even break your flow. You just kept <laughs> Jeremy's got that Colossus steel skin. He just lets it just bounce off him. Um, Jeremy, <laughs> I do want to know. Do you? Ha- I know you said you haven't played that long, but do you have any early thoughts about going into uh, into Silent Hill Two yet? Well, okay. So first, before you answer that, have you played the original Silent Hill or Silent Hill Two? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, that was uh, what probably 
That's a long PS2 time days. ago. Yeah, PS2 days. Um, I mean, I haven't played enough to that I can give you a, like an honest opinion of things. I mean, it looks great. Uh, I was really, really worried about uh, the stutter because I heard that was an, an issue on PC, but I haven't experienced any of that so far, and the performance has actually been pretty decent. So let me ask, what, what uh, PC are you playing on? I have a 4080 Super. Okay. What about a processor? I have a Ryzen 7 5800X3D. Okay. So I'm on an i7 14700K and a 3090. Mm -hmm. I am experiencing this stutter. Um, Really? Yeah. Ever so micro. It's definitely not game breaking or or experience breaking, but I do notice it. I tend to be sensitive towards any drops and things like that. So uh, it's, listen, It'll either get patched out or not. Right now, it's not affecting my my experience. But uh, I mean, for what you've played, sounds like you're you're gonna continue on. Oh, for sure. I mean, I don't like I said. I think I literally had it on long enough to get to the first save spot, which is that well. And so I like I walked down the hill pretty much, and I got the achievement for trying to leave Silent Hill. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, okay. Interesting. If you walk out the back of the yeah. map, an achievement will pop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not surprised there. You don't have to tell uh, Matt about achievements. He doesn't care about them. Oh, okay. No, it's nice to hear about them. It's nice to hear that there's unconventional achievements, unlike one. I, I think you get an achievement just for hitting that first save point. I was like, ah, you got to be kidding me. Well, no, that's brilliant because trying to leave Silent Hill, anyone who's intelligent would absolutely try to leave Silent Hill as long as the, as soon as they could. Just I turn around and run the other fucking way. There, there was a uh, a video I saw today. It was like how I played Silent Hill, and it showed him running out the back, and then it scrolled credits. <laughs> Have you all seen the mod where someone removed all the fog from the game, so you actually get to see what everything looks like? And people have commented, no. "Man, that looks like very Alan Wakey." Um, but yeah, there's someone has actually removed all the, mod. all the fog from the game, which is actually, I mean, pretty cool when you think about it. But obviously, the fog is something that contributes to the spookiness of the game and the tension. So. You know, obviously you don't want to play the entire game that way, or maybe, you know, you want to play the first time through with the fog, but if you get your hands on the mod and play through, you know, without it, I mean, that might be a cool experience, but not the first time through. Okay. So, uh, that's all you want to talk about, Jeremy? Um, I, before I, before I went on vacation, I was coming back to, um, to finish, uh, I think it was the Valhalla, Valhalla DLC for God of War. Oh, such, uh, such good DLC. Yeah, that, that's that been fun. Um, I mean, I think that's pretty much all I've been playing, though. I mean, the last maybe week or two. Did you did you go back to the DLC and get all the different things? I haven't finished it entirely yet. I'd say I'm probably about halfway through it, if I had to guess. Yeah. Uh, get, go, that was such a good DLC, because uh, the way they set it up, it's it's quick and to the point, but it's like there's also progression with it. Like you, you have to go through it multiple times to actually like experience everything, so it's it's pretty cool. Tricky. Uh, uh what have I been playing? Um, Division Two. Uh, they started doing the throwback events, which is basically they're getting ready to launch uh, Seasons Two Point Um, which is going to bring a number of changes to the game. Um, oh. My dog just showed up. Everybody say hi to Bo. I don't know if you can see Bo. Can you see Bo we on can Twitch? See, no. no, you can't. You can see a lump on Twitch. <laughs> a lump. <laughs> it is a lump. Uh, yeah, they're, so they're uh, every two days they're doing uh, the climax mission from all the pre- previous seasons with a guaranteed exotic drop from that season. So that's pretty cool. Um they're also doing an accelerated global events where normally the global events were a week long. Now these are only four days long and and they basically cover two of the climax missions. And on top of that, they reduce the number of uh, things you have to do. Like normally you would have to get like a hundred headshots, but now because it's only four days, you only have to get 50. Um, So it's guaranteed exotics. If you, you know, going back, uh, I know Dex has been going back and playing a couple of them. Um, this, as we're speaking right now, they are, uh, the exotic you can get is the Memento, which is one of the best exotics in the game if you're a skilled player. Um, I also know they're going to do the Ninja 
the injured bike backpack uh, later in the season. So that's been pretty cool. Um, started my career at NHL 24. Um, started as uh, an OHL player and then was quickly drafted first overall because I'm just that damn good at the game. What team did you get drafted um, to? It wasn't the Rangers. Oh, no, I got drafted to um, the Chicago Blackhawks. Okay. So it's not hateful. Um, got through the preseason and earned my spot uh, there on the second line as a right winger. Uh, my primary position is a center, but made the second line as the right winger. <clears throat> I'm enjoying it, but I, I do have a gripe about NHL 24, and that's the fact that for a long time, I thought the game was glitching out and the fact that I was playing the game and there was no commentary on, until you scored a goal. Um, it turns out there's a setting in the game where it's uh, the commentary is goal only, but they turn that on by default. And I like I don't understand why EA would do that. Because if I'm playing the game, I want to hear the commentary. I want to hear, oh, you know, just like you're watching on TV. They turn that off by default, which I don't understand. So EA, fix your shit. Please. Um, that being said, um, what else am I playing? Uh, I started my career in MLB The Show 24. Um, I'm a pitcher. No, no, no. Am I, yeah, I'm a pitcher. So I'm going through that. Um, I got drafted by the uh, Cardinals in like the 14th round or some shit because I'm not that good at that game. Um, and well, one, what else have I playing? Yeah, that's it. I really haven't played anything. I I haven't gone back to Outlaws. I did try a couple times to get the, uh, the, tro the last trophy in Astrobot, um, but got frustrated and gave up. I was going to ask you if you finished that because it took me, I, I finished that, but I, there was a time where I was sitting downstairs and I was getting like visibly pissed off in front of my <laughs> wife over that. <laughs> and I had to, I had to shut it off, or like bad things were gonna happen. So I shut it off, and I came back to it the next day, and I think it was like the third try, I knocked it out like nothing. So you just have to be in the right mindset, I think. <laughs> well, listen, I okay. So you obviously got the platinum in. Yes. So all I have left is that is the 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 gold statue mission. Right. I I've been doing it on stream because I've been watch I've, I've been advertising as come watch me rage. I get to the point of it's the last section where you have the X's get shot at you. You have the triangles get shot at you. You have the circles and then the squares. Yep. Every time I get to the second one, which I think is the circles. Or no, it's the triangles. Every single time I get to that part, I feel like I'm getting cheesed hit. I think it was and the I think it was the triangles that that I was getting hung up on too for a while. I cuz the X's is easy. You just run in the middle of them. No big deal. The triangles you have you have to jump. Yeah, you, you have, have to, to like, you have to get the timing like yeah, you have to go out kind of out and around and underneath or something like that. But the timing yeah. has to be like spot perfect. it has to be perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a little but uh, again, I'm not I'm not really going out of my way to get that platinum. Like I have no desire to go back and get it. It was just one of those things. That's like, well, I'm not really playing anything else. So I'm just going to do this. So, it's it's not bad, and I like I I don't want to say it's a bad game. It's just that happens to be the hardest level. But there were other of the other uh, other levels in that game that were I I think much harder. It's the, the only the only levels that I that I personally had an issue with were the, I think it was the void they were called the voids the void levels it was always the X the triangle the circle right 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 those nope. those were the only ones that I had like a, a really hard time with everything else was doable. All right, so since you got the platinum, let me ask you this because I w I was vague because I didn't want to spoil anything with the game, but you're gonna know what I'm talking about. So after you beat the boss of a certain planet, another level opens up, like a special kind of level. You know what I'm talking about? I'm trying to think. It's been a little bit since I finished it. I honestly, I'm not sure. 
Hold on. I'm going to I'm going to send you a message on uh Facebook right now. Gotcha. Uh Okay. You know so those levels, you know what I'm talking about? Yep. Okay. I I said on the show that if they did those style of Astrobot games, I think they would be highly successful. What do you think? Like do you think that like those are high quality that they could actually sell their own games if they did something like that? They were extremely well done. So I mean I, I do I think they could sell it off sell off just those? Yeah, for sure. I I mean I would play it. <laughs> Well, I would too, but uh, you know, it, it it's one of those things like I want to talk about, but I don't want to spoil that because I think that's an actually special part of Astrobot. So, I I just think like if, if they if they go the, the Nintendo style and just sell like those type of games, but instead of Mario, it's Astrobot running around. I think they would sell incredibly well. I agree with you. Okay. All right, and uh, for. Our listeners, this may make sense. It may not make sense. Alex, what have you been playing this week? All right. So for the live listeners, sorry, you get to hear this twice. Um, but for the sake of editing, this would make my life a ton easier just to redo this. So uh, because of my audio dropping out, I definitely appreciate you all uh, listening again. Um, so uh, first off, I've been playing some of my you know live service games, Helldivers, uh, Rocket League, got gearing up for the Haunted Hallows event because Halloween to my favorite times of the year. And it's the Haunted Hallows is always one of my, it's consistent. It's always one of my favorite seasonal events. So I'm excited to see what they do tie-ins with. I know obviously the new arena they introduced, the new playing field is in the middle of the woods next to a lake. So, you know, I've seen Nitro talk about how possibly it could be something tied to Slenderman. Um, there's also, you know, you know, Camp Crystal Lake is another idea that I'll throw out there. Alan Wake even, because obviously um, that takes place around uh, a big lake in the Pacific Northwest. So all these things could be, you know, involved. But, you know, they've done last year, they did uh, the uh, Night Before Christmas tie-in. The year before, there's the horror, the icons of horror. They've done Ghostbusters. They've done Batman. They've done Stranger Things. So, um, you know, we'll just have to see. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see what they they pull out. I don't necessarily know if it's going to be something like um, Slenderman or Alan Wake, but you know, something, it'll be good. Cause usually they, they usually head out of the park when it comes to Haunted Hallows. Also got my platinum trophy in wild card football. Um, just, I've talked a lot about that game, but just one final tip on a gold trophy called my squad is better than yours. Essentially you have to, t uh, in the dream squad, uh, section of the menu, uh, you basically have to take an NFL team, from the bottom to the top, basically you have to build your players from like an overall squad score of like 50 all the way up to 90. So basically an easy way you can see, like check in and see what you're going to max out at. So you basically don't play, you know, hours and hours with a team only to have it max out at 86, which I almost did. If you go into exhibition and then you pick computer versus player, player versus player, whatever, and scroll all the way to the right when you get to team selection, your team as it currently is in Dream Squad with the attributes that they have will be on the top. Down on the bottom beneath that is what your team maxes out as. So I, like I said, I was rolling with the team, building them up, and I found out that I was only going to max out an 86. So I went in, and as you go in and complete challenges in Dream Squad, you get access to better players because players are tiered differently. There's legendary players, epic players, rare. So you definitely want to put in the best players you possibly can. So one way you can check it where you're going to end up at is in exhibition mode, and that could save you a lot of time if you're rolling with a squad and they're just not necessarily going to get that peak at 90. Um, and then last but not least, I'm getting into the spooky season, as I said, started playing a game called Still Wakes the Deep, which I know Jeremy, um, has played a little bit of, and, um, uh, also I think Rick has played some. Uh, I think we were talking before, uh, again, this is, you know, a, a redo here, you know, we previously talked about this, but you were saying that your son was playing Still Wakes the Deep, and that kind of inspired you, Jeremy? Yeah, he, I, I saw him playing it. Uh, he had it on the Xbox Game Pass um, subscription. So I figured I would wait for a sale. And I It only came down a few bucks here recently, so I picked it up. I figured I'd eventually get to it. But uh, yeah, it, it, it looks, it, like I said, it reminded me of uh, the movie The Thing. Kind of gets off that vibe, and it's perfect for uh, the month of October. I mean, I, I'll, always, I'll always play a horror, horror or... Uh, you know, a game along those lines, but I mean, now's the perfect time to do it, so. Yeah, it's currently 33% off on sale until the 24th this month, so again, if you when you hear the podcast, you want to go check it out, it is currently on sale if you want to save a little money, but the game basically is you're stuck on an oil rig, you're working on an oil rig out in the middle of the sea, and 
you know, you're, you're, the intro level is just you're going about a day. You got to go meet with your boss and everything, and you have a fight with him. But then towards the end of the intro chapter, you, like, the shit hits the fan, and there's a giant explosion. And at first, you know, everything's being downplayed, like, oh, we just hit something with a drill. Everything's fine. And as you go through the ship, because I, it's one of those situations where you're kind of locked out of areas of the ship. You have to follow this linear path, you know, and you go to different areas of the ship, chapter through chapter, kind of like a Dead Space kind of thing. But basically, as you go through the story, you find out things are much worse off than you originally thought. And again, Jeremy hinted there with the thing that there, yes, there are creatures and monsters that you will have to try to avoid. Um, not really combat, more you just running away, hiding, trying to escape. So, I mean, it's one of those games where you kind of, that's what makes, you know, your heart pump when playing a, a survival horror game. That's what makes you feel the tension is a lot of times is you are helpless and you just have to run. Um, because obviously if you have like a giant shotgun or something, you can take out the enemies. Not as scary, so definitely plays on your fear there. But yeah, stuck on an oil rig, and you essentially just have to survive chapter through chapter, trying to, you know, take on problems as they come along. Oh, like, hey, the comms aren't working. You got to get to the life... It's like one point you're trying to get to the lifeboats, but then the lifeboats, like, basically are all busted, and they fall in the sea. Okay, then we got to get to the helipad. Oh, shit. You know, something happens to the helicopter. Okay, then we got to get down to engineering to work on the generators, because they're about to go out, and if they go out, we are, we're fucked, because we can't call for help, so... Just send you to the different areas of the rig and you having to survive, essentially. Um, definitely a shorter game, but very impressive in the realm of, like, the voice work and the mocap. You know, it looks really good. And for a studio that I had never heard of, I was really impressed with their work so far. One trophy tip, you have to play through the game in Gaelic in order to get a trophy. Now, the text, the text is in Gaelic, but... The voice work is still in English, so you'll still know what's going on. You can still understand. I mean, the 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 primary players, everyone on the, the rig has a thick accent, so it's kind of hard to understand anyway. But you still can know what's going on because the voice work will be in English. Um, just everyone will have accents, and you just kind of have to get used to it. But only the text is in Gaelic, so um, so yeah, I'm I'm impressed so far. Um, and and you know, for someone who I was looking for a scary game to this to play in during October. Kind of ran out of things. Still Wakes the Deep is one that I've really been kind of sitting on for a bit. But uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying my time so far in it. So just plowing right around. All right. That all you, you got this week, Alex? Yes, sir. All right. And I've been doing a ton this week, actually. So I beat the next dungeon in Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom. It Again, making for fun, exciting gameplay when... Uh, I got the water block echo and my wife looked at me horrified when I put up a water block echo, grabbed a monster with my grab ability and moved him into the water block and drowned him. So <laughs> the game gives you a couple different things you can do with the powers, but it's it's definitely a little bit easier of a Zelda game, but it's still fun. And, uh, you know, like I've said and you know, others have been detractors for Nintendo games, but basically the Nintendo focuses on making things fun. And that may not mean that it's difficult, may not mean that it, it's too complex, but I'm having a ton of fun with this game, especially given what it is and finding out the different combos and things you could do with the, with the echo summons. So definitely give that a try. And weird enough, I don't know if this speaks good or bad of the game, but today on Woot.com, the game was on sale for all of uh, $51. So there's that. That means the game sucks. Right. Okay, tricky. It's uh, it's always weird to see Nintendo games on sale because you're never really used to, like Nintendo doesn't like really tend to lower the prices of their stuff. They don't really put them, like, I mean, I guess they do put them on sale from time to time, but you don't really ever see them typically go down in value. Like, you're not going to see, like, a Nintendo game go for 20 bucks like you would, like, a PlayStation game or an Xbox game. So, uh, in that way, I've always kind of seen my Nintendo as kind of like Disney, where their shit just is always kind of, ex not expensive, but just, it's always at MSRP. And if you want to play it, you you are going to have to be willing to spend, you know, the 60 or the 50 bucks. Yeah, I, I don't know what to make of it. Again, a site like Woot.com, I'm not sure what they're doing with their stock or where they're getting it. But yeah, generally speaking, Nintendo's still going to sell for 60 but well, like, I mean, what I mean, I don't know if you remember back when like um, like mobile apps were becoming a bigger thing and growing like on the iPhone and whatnot. Nintendo was speaking out about how it devalued video games. Um, oh, yeah. Would, you know, and, and that's part, probably part of it. Like if they think if they drop their biggest franchises down in price, they're probably like, we're devaluing our own games. Why are we going to do that? I mean, 
Yeah, and that's part of it. That's been something that they've talked about a while. So when you do get discounts, it's not deep. And the fact is, it's 50 bucks for a physical copy, which is pretty decent, all things considered. Yeah, you can use their voucher system and get the game for 50, but then it's digital and we know how some people feel about that. So just a, a note about that. Again, that's today only. So by the time some of the people listen to this on Wednesday, it'll be expired. But just keep an eye out. I uh, played another game called Wizard with a Gun. It's kind of like a roguelike where you go construct your own firearms and the bolts that go with them. And you have to go out into the world to... You basically are rewinding time to go back and adventure to find more cogs that will help you rewind time further and so on and so forth. Rinse, repeat. You collect materials out in the world to build back your home base. And you can play with up to two friends, three friends, I forget. But it's a it's a fun little roguelike. It's top down. It's very Western-ish with magic built in. So it it's neat to see the mechanics that they they introduce in the game. And as you explore further, you get more and more into the world of like the cataclysm already happened. You've already passed that. So now you're you're working to reverse all that. Also put some time into Dungeons Darkest Dungeon 2, again, another roguelike. Uh, for those of you who don't know, it's it's a game that is it, it, when we say it's tough, it's not that it's it's punishingly difficult like a Dark Souls or a Monster Hunter. It is tough in the aspect of you have a lot of stuff thrown at you and many times there's very little you could do about it. And the game is all about coping with that and coming back stronger the next time trying to get through. So if you're not too too uh prone to being depressed because you haven't made progress in a game it's it's a fun little game the aesthetic is very good the art style is very good just got a lot of confusing what icons it uses iconography for for a lot of status in the game so you got to learn what that is also put some more time into or no, no, we're going to cover that in a little bit. Uh, what else did I do? Space Marine 2. That's what I want to talk about. Did another mission in that game and went through uh, again. The game only has like six missions in the primary campaign and a couple missions in the PVE co-op campaign. But again, for for how short it is, it's very high quality. It's very, very fine tuned with what you do. So definitely give that a look. Uh, I did more Baldur's Gate 3, and yes, my Dark Urge has has submitted to his um, tendencies once again, where I was in a camp and found a paralyzed tiefling who, who told me to go away, but it was a secluded room, and therefore I was able to uh, act out on those Dark Urges, and that tiefling is no longer of this plane. So... The, the game continues to impress with the way it it gives you options and provides additional thank you provides additional things you could do that give the game so much replay value and I definitely urge anybody who who has played it even if you think you're done I mean I guess you pretty much already know just go back give it another try and see if there's anything else of interest. And then finally, the thing I want to talk about the most is Silent Hill 2. Like Jeremy, I put time into this. I, I did play the original back in the day, and I only played it once. And I think I you can tell me about this if you agree, Jeremy. But back in the day, I really didn't get all the concepts and the things that were happening in the game. I, I mean, I, def I definitely didn't. I mean, I was... I, uh, I'm trying to think how old when when that came out. So I mean, there's definitely some stuff that yeah that I didn't fully understand. So I'm excited to go through this time and you know get all the different endings and you know pick up on everything for sure. Yeah, and, and this again for those who haven't played it, it's a game that has multiple endings, and a lot of it, a lot of the endings that occur, kind of. There's things you do in the game and it doesn't necessarily tell you that that changes the direction of what you're doing. And historically, Silent Hill games have had a good ending, a bad ending, a bad negative ending, a good positive ending, 
and then a silly, goofy, spooky ending. And and this remake is is very much the same. So I'm actually playing the game and, and my wife is sitting off to the side of me asking me questions. And, and I'm trying to do my best to remember what certain story beats were. Because, again, the game kind of was very nebulous about the way some of the things were covered. And I don't see very much changing in the way that this one is doing it. But they have changed up some parts of the game, and I'm not going to spoil anything here. Just know that certain encounters are a little different than what you might have experienced in the original. That said, I don't remember, and Jerry, maybe you can remember, I don't think there was a dodge button in the first one. I don't believe so. Okay, because this one does have a dodge mechanic, and that kind of, I don't want to say it trivializes combat. But it definitely makes combat more manageable. And that being said, some of the enemies behave a little differently. So just be aware of that. Other than that, the the over the shoulder camera definitely makes things a little more hectic in the aspect of which way are you supposed to look at what time. There is a quick turn button, so just be aware of that. I, I found that out recently and realized how many points I could have used that on. But the graphics are insane. I can't believe Bloober Team, you know, hit it out of the park with this one. Just that damn Unreal Engine micro stutter. It's like I said, it's not really taking anything away. But at least not for me, but there are a lot of people who are being affected by it. So hopefully that's something that can get patched at some point, though. I don't think there's a lot of hope about it, but I decided to go in, grab it, play through as much as I can, because like I said, sometimes the puzzles, I'm doing it on standard difficulty, standard puzzles. How about you, Jeremy? That's yeah, that's what I did too. Yep. Yeah. I didn't want to go too easy. So I'm just playing on the default. Uh, The only issue I have actually with the game that really gets on my nerves and I, I haven't seen anybody else talk about it is sometimes when I start up the game, it defaults to my backup monitor, and I have no idea why. And then there's times that when I die, it jumps and moves the game from my primary to my second monitor. And I got no clue why. So if I come up with... It's very strange. (laughs) Yeah, the only option for me is I go into my options, set it to the other monitor, apply, and then set it back to the primary monitor and apply, and it it jumps back to where it needs to be. Uh, So if I find a solution, I'll be sure to post one up. But that's all I've really been playing this week. I know it seems like a lot, but it's a bunch of different smaller gaming sessions as I was able to make it through the week. So with that said, we are going to move on to the news section. And the first bit of news we have comes from the PlayStation blog and Adam Mitchell. And it's talking about the games that are coming to extra premium of PlayStation Plus this month. So that said, the games coming to both the extra and premium tier are Dead Island 2 for the 4 and 5, Two Points Campus for the 4 and 5. Alex, you said you were interested in Two Point Campus, right? Uh, No, but... Uh... Yeah, my memory's no. failing me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry, I was uh, trying to let you off the hook there, but just... just no, it's, if my memory is bad, my memory is bad. Uh, the Devil and Me for the 4 and 5, Gree for the 4 and 5, Return to Monkey Island for the 5, Ghostbusters Spirits Unleashed for the 4 and 5, spooky game for the spooky time of year, Firefighting Simulator, The Squad 4 and 5, a horrible, horrible game nobody should play, Overpass 2 for the 5, Tour to France 2023 for the 4 and 5, in case you had a hankering to be a cyclist. Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands for the 4. And for the premium, you get the lot. Were, were, were you joking about the Firefighter Simulator? Maybe. Because I, I know how you like your fires. So. Maybe. Uh, for the no, premium. He likes his fire, so when they're, they're putting it out, he's not a fan of that. It's, it, there's actually. There, there's. Uh, there is a game. It was on Game Pass. I forget what it was called. But I think you literally fight fires with fire. Like you set things on fire to to destroy them, to collect on insurance. What was it? Ember? Yes, Ember. E-M-B-R. Thank you. My wife 
Give me the, the Metallica uh, song, Fight Fire with Fire. <laughs> One of the best songs ever. Um, sure. Anyway, <coughs> after that, shut up, Tricky. After the... No, that, that was a legit cough. That wasn't a mock. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, on the premium level, The Last Clockwinder, which is a PSVR 2 game, Dino Crisis for the 4 and 5, Siren for the 4 and 5, R-Type Dimensions, X for the 4 and 5. So, uh, Jeremy, any of those games speak to you? Um, Definitely uh, the Dino Crisis. Um, I don't know why they're doing a, a 4 and 5 version. That makes no sense to me because I don't see how that would be any different, like graphically, or I, I don't understand, but yeah, whatever. That's about the only one really out of the premium. Uh, I've always heard really good things about the Ghostbusters Spirits Unleashed. Um, and uh, Dead Island 2, I played a little bit of that, and uh, eh, not my game really. Is the Spirits Unleashed, is that the 1v5 one or no? I, I Maybe I'm maybe I'm getting it mixed up. Then there's a Ghostbusters I, remastered. I think maybe that's the one I'm thinking of. That I think I wanted. I, to I play. legit no. I was I was legit asking because I this, know this is one v five. Spirits Unleashed is is heavily multiplayer focused, and you actually get to play as the ghosts in some of the areas. So okay, that's well, not saying, the one I was the 1v5 thinking. One v five one or. I don't know what you're talking about, Tricky. You know games like. Uh... Friday thirteenth, we play Friday or Yeah, I don't I don't night. think they have one of those for Ghostbusters. Because who would who would the villain be? The ghost. Yeah, but like the point of playing like as the Predator or as um Jason is the fact that they're these overpowered monsters who could take on four people at once. You think the ghost, any one of the ghosts aside from Stay Puff could take on the Ghostbusters? I mean, maybe like Gozer or something like that, but one, if you play as Stay Puff, you're way overpowered. And then two, like if you're Slimer, the Ghostbusters are going to murk you. So I don't know how well that would work out. Uh, I mean, you you can look it up because I mean, like, I know there's there's a few Ghostbusters games on the PlayStation Network, but that's I'm not I'm not aware of what the one you're talking about. Uh, all right. While he looks that up um, from the chat, Saber says Luigi is a spooky game for this time of year. I imagine you mean Luigi's Mansion. Will said it's not a good game, but collectible. I'm not sure which game you're referring to, Will. Please enlighten us. And Saber comes in again, says the only time this works is if it's Freddy Krueger and the Nightmare on Elm Street. Find it yet, Tricky? Yep. Spirits Unleashed focuses an online multiplayer game. Up to five players focusing on 4v1 matches with asymmetrical gameplay. Each player is able to create their own Ghostbuster avatar with the Ghostbusters headquarters acting as the hub between matches where players can change their avatar's appearance, clothing, and voice, as well as access items and ghosts they have unlocked for use in matches. At times, players will require to visit certain areas of the hub to progress events in the game storyline. Uh, uh, okay, you, you, don't, you don't need to read the entire thing. Uh, no, 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 I was just trying. Um, it also says um, players are destined to whether play as a Ghostbuster or be chosen to control a ghost in the match. Players may also opt to let an AI bot control the ghost for the match. So it is a 4v1. But I mean, also, I think you can play. You don't have to play online. I think you can play with just CPU Ghostbusters, too. If need be. Uh don't know. I, 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 I'm just reading this off of Wikipedia, so... Okay, so the only, this is... Because actually, Yield was playing some with friends uh, on Friday, I think, and commented on this, so um, he this would have been a great episode to have him on, but he's he's watching his beloved Bengals, but we can get some more from him next week um, as we, we lead up to Halloween, but... All right. Uh, so Will was talking about that the Firefighter Simulator game is a good collectible. Uh, anything else speaking to you, Jeremy? Um, like I said, I think Dino Crisis, um, I remember playing that as a kid. I, I can't remember if I think that was on the original. That was on the one, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it just reminded me, that's a game that is, if they're going to remake any game, like, why are we not doing a Dino Crisis remake? That's what I've been wondering for a long time. You, you and many, many others. <laughs> I, I want an infamous remake. I could do it with an infamous remake. I Alex. play that as well. Alex, anything uh, on that list speaking to you? Uh, first, as a general comment, you know, I think we all know how all the different streaming services like have a section like Hulu, Netflix, all, Peacock. They have a different section for all the the Halloween movies to watch this uh, this month. And um, well, everyone's in the spirit. 
Um, I do appreciate how with PlayStation Plus they have given us, they haven't overloaded us, but they have given us, you know, a few games here that, you know, if you're in the Halloween spirit, you might want to play, you know, like Siren, uh, Ghostbusters, also Dead Island 2, and they gave away Dead Space as a free game for PlayStation Plus as one of the monthly games this this month if you have Essential. So I do appreciate that, you know, them contributing to the seasonality of everything. And really, if you're a company, it's only smart to do, to take advantage of that because, you know, people are in the mood. So if they're in the mood, just feed them. Um, me personally, uh, Ghostbusters, I'll probably download that and play it. Again, I'm, I'm going to look more into it, but if I can just play solo and have like all computers with me um to get the trophies then i'll probably play that although like i said i know yield was playing i think he's playing with homer so um there's a group within the community who is playing it so you know maybe i can can join them and and earn trophies that way but anything ghostbusters aside from maybe sanctum of slime uh i'm usually down to play um ashley had talked about how she wanted to play return to monkey island um i'm also a fan of the the Monkey Island Adventure game, so I might give that a try. Um, but yeah, of what's here, that's probably about it. Um, I think it was Saber who also mentioned Luigi's Mansion. I do have Luigi's Mansion 2, the HD version that came out on the Switch earlier this year. Have not played it, so uh, I might need to take a little break from from trophies to uh, to go play that on my Switch as well. But uh, but yeah, that's that's of the list. That's what I uh, I think I'm most interested in. You know, you talk about the streaming services and getting special sections for uh, all the Halloween spooky stuff. I have a personal gripe with Disney Plus and Hulu. Oh, in that not Hulu Ween. Well, no, not Hulu Ween, but that they have the Simpsons and a section for all of the Halloween specials. But when you play them, it does not play them in order. You literally start it and once that episode ends it goes to the next episode in the season that that halloween special occurred it does not jump from halloween special to halloween special fix your shit that sounds, that sounds like a first world problem for you there matt shut up tricky well it is but i can also appreciate what he's saying you know i i, I can too but it's i i just, I just like giving matt some shit sometimes that's fine that's all right but by I, the way matt, matt has no problem giving it right back as far as like tv halloween specials go i think treehouse of horror may be the best agreed and and i'd rather just let it go through and play but i guess that's expecting a little too much tricky anything on that list that speaks out to you uh the devil in me um i, I I'm always interested in those games. I just don't ever find time to play them. I think that's what the third or the fourth in the anthology. Yeah, for those for those who don't know, it's Supermassive's Dark Pictures anthology. So think Man of Medan. Um, I can't think of any of the other House of yeah, Ashes. One, House House of Ashes. Yeah, that's one. Of them. So we're, that's the one we're talking about. Was Was Little Hope one of them, or was that it? Yes. Was one of Little these? Little Hope was one of them. Yeah. Okay. So this is either the third or the fourth one. I own. Uh, all the four versions so far. Um, I didn't. A couple. Of, I got free upgrades to the five version, so I'll play those when I get them. Um, so I don't know if I own this one or not. Um, or five version. I mean, so I, I'm interested in that, but like I said, it, it takes me. It's it's very. I want to play them, but I never find the time to because those are very much like you got to be into it. You got to like all the story driven. And a lot of times when I'm playing video games now, I'm being distracted by, you know, either Facebook or Twitch or whatever the case may be. So I lose out on things. But one thing I do like about those games is they do have like a streamer mode to it. So your Twitch chat can influence your choices. So I, I like that. I, li um, I like that integration, especially when games have it. It gives more engagement. Right. Um. I own Wildlands, but that is a fantastic game if you guys uh, like it. Uh, Wildlands, I think, was the first one, right? The, the Breakpoint was the second one. I, yes. I dropped off of Ghost Recon um, a while ago. I, I'm a big fan of the, the Tom Clancy games, except for Rainbow Six, because that's first person. I can't do first person. Uh, Dead Island 2, that's also the one that like was in development hell for the longest time, right? Yes, where it had the trailer that came out. And then the game the disappeared. Down, yeah, yeah, the guy running down the 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 pier or whatever. It, it disappeared was. for like ten years. <laughs> um, Return to Monkey Island. I I've heard good things. Never played any of those games, so I might be interested in that one. 
Um, they are they are very clever. Like they're very cleverly written, but it's just the puzzle solving is is not like the kind of games we've typically played. Like it's it's very outside the box thinking. Like you, it's kind of like those things where you go through every permutation in your mind, and then it's like the answer is you know far more simple than you than than you would think. But those are they are. It's it's more the writing, I think, in the characters in Monkey Island that make it so special. Less the gameplay. The gameplay and in, in the puzzle solving is, you know, I'm not saying it's not fun, but you're playing for the writing, essentially, because Tim Schafer was one of the people originally involved in those, and we all know what kind of charm he brings to a video game, so. I, I think the only Monkey Island game I played, I think, was the Telltale one. Um, So, my, my opinion of the game might be screwed. And um, I know I'm about to get some hate when I say this, but... I could care less about Dino Crisis. Everybody's hyped about it, and I'm happy for them, but I could care less about it. Well, the good news is I feel that way for most of the games on this list. None of them are going to get me to reach up to any of the PlayStation Plus, much less the heightened level. So that is your list of games for the PlayStation Plus this year. I I, I do have a question for you. Um... A little behind the scenes, uh, you've talked about wanting to play Rocket League with the the guys. Do you need a plus to play Rocket League with the guys? Or are you playing it on the PC and does it affect you? I would probably play it on the PC and therefore wouldn't affect me. 10-4. Because he would need PlayStation Plus to play online. Well, I... Okay, so there's been a debate uh, in some forums that I've been in um, that... PlayStation Plus isn't required for all multiplayer games. Like, if there's a game that's multiplayer only, or you need an online connection to play the game, uh, Sony apparently does have exceptions to that rule. I don't know... Fortnite was one of them, I think. Yeah, so there are some games where you just don't need PlayStation Plus, and it allows you to play online. I don't know the entire list. I don't know where I could find the list. I'm sure I could Google it and, you know, do some deep searching. But there are some games that just don't require you to have Plus to play online. Okay. So, um, It'd be yeah, nice if, if Sony had a list or an FAQ somewhere to include that. Right. I, I, I I think it may be up to the developer. I don't know if Sony's actually making that choice. I think it's up to the developer. So, uh, yeah, Dex says doesn't think you do because it's free to play. Therefore, the, the it probably is limited to free to play games because of the nature of wanting to get more people involved in them. Well, hey, free to play. Rocket League is free to play. So who knows? You may not need a, need a subscription for that. Eh, well, I'm downloading it now, so we will give it a try. That said, um... The next thing comes from uh, oh, IGN. Matt, I do. Sorry, I do want to bring up something with Rocket League. Um, I don't know because Hell Divers, you can find us, but I don't know if you can specifically friend us or find us. I guess there's you can have friends from the Epic uh, via Epic account when playing Rocket League, but I don't know how much harder it would be for you to find us if you were playing for PC than if you were um, just playing on PlayStation. Well, yeah, we've seen others who do the. Uh, a friend code or something like that but regardless you know like i said i'll we'll, we'll i'm going to try it on the pc we'll try to see how we can connect and we'll go from there speaking of going on we're going on to the next article which uh anybody here have any particular love for the tomb raider series i like the uh the rebooted ones the old ones i'm not too much of a fan of Okay, because that seemed to be the case for uh, a lot of people in the games that are getting remastered, which include Tomb Raiders 4 through 6, which are uh, The Last Revelation, Chronicles, and Angel of Darkness. Saber said he is a fan of the Tomb Raider games, so uh, hopefully he gets some enjoyment out of that. Uh, Anybody particularly going to be interested in going back to these? I know, Tricky, you're not. You know, it's weird because I recognize the popularity of Tomb Raider and how important the Tomb Raider franchise was to the early days of the PlayStation, but it's just one of those franchises that I'm just like, nah, I'm good. Like, I tried to play one of the reboots, and, you know, I played it, I bought it on Steam, I played it for a little bit, maybe for a day, and I just never went back to it. I, I don't know. I Maybe it's just because I don't give a shit about Laura Croft as a character. Uh, who knows, maybe if I gave it more time, maybe that would change, but I, I've... You know, like Metal Gear Solid, Tomb Raider, 
there have just always been these franchises that no matter how popular they were, you know, throw Final Fantasy in there as well. I've just never really cared enough to actually dive into them, you know, and I, yeah, I I think it's, it's got to be some of it gameplay, but a lot of it has to center around the fact that I just don't really care about playing as Laura Croft. And it's not just because, you know, she's a female protagonist. I don't give two shits about playing as Spider-Man either. And obviously Peter Parker, Spider-Man, Miles Morales, whoever. Um, but I, yeah, I don't know. It's just one of those game franchises that I just never devoted any time to. And I've never actually felt less for not. I don't feel like I've ever missed out by not playing the Tomb Raider games. Well, which may like- sound like blasphemy, but. No, it's not because I tried the originals and I, I I could care less, couldn't care less about them. Uh, but Will does talk about Tomb Raider, the original horny boy game, which many of us remember the nude code fiasco. Jeremy, you ever uh, try to type that nude code in there for Lara I Croft? Have, I have not. I do remember um, trying those games as a kid and just the, the like, uh, I think it's Saber in the chat mentions the tank controls. That was just, ugh gross <laughs> I, I couldn't get the jumping off properly right the 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 latest three that came out um rise uh shadow and uh, i think it was just just tomb raider those weren't terrible games uh but i had no desire to really go back and play the old ones i i don't know what it is but like i much more enjoyed uncharted than i did tomb raider and i tried both the old tomb raiders and the new tomb raiders and I, just something was not clicking forming um saber says that they're currently on sale he just bought them for the place on the playstation network uh and tricky you already said that you're not you you have no affinity for him so you're not getting them right no okay all right moving on sony had for somebody had a large oversight at sony where they released hotline miami 2 on the playstation for australia but oops the game was technically banned because it was refused classification coming from IGN and Ryan Dinsdale doing the research uh they Sony had to send an email out to Australian gamers talking about the removal of Hotline Miami 2 from the PlayStation storefront and uh it wasn't supposed to be on there and it was denied a rating for a whole year for those of you who don't know <laughs> Hotline Miami is a top down uh, shooter gore fest kind of in the old school grand theft auto you guys remember grand theft auto one and two back in the day yep. that top down so that that's kind of like what hotline miami is uh if and, i had to describe those games in one word it would be grimy yeah yeah they they are kind of of that mindset you know what i think of when i think of them postal not getting anybody's blood boiling no. certainly it was it was a series it was a weird series but uh basically they had to remove it and and again this was it was put up on the playstation plus for a little bit and uh so this is pulled from sale pulled from playstation plus and is no longer available so sorry aussies guess you'll have to uh vpn if you want to try to get that game back Anybody have any particular comments on this one? Because I think it's fairly clear cut. I mean, Dex is Dex is in the chat saying this is ridiculous because he's actually the one to let me in on it. I mean, I, I'm I'm shocked it took they really it was there because the, the Hotline Miami and Hotline Miami Two are games I've considered playing in the past. Um, I actually was looking at them last year for the Trophy Rarity event because you know they were on the PlayStation Plus catalog and they were free, so it's like oh you know these seem to be popular games or at least you know. Uh, seem to have at least a cult following, so maybe I'll give them a try. Never did, but the mere fact that they sat on there for that long in a market where they weren't rated is pretty... I mean, that's a little bit more than an oversight. That's 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 negligent. I mean, I, I don't know who, who actually caught this, but it's kind of it's crazy they sat there for so long. Because if you're in Australia and you see these games are out there and they're not rated, you're not... no Who's squealing? Like, if you're a game player, like, oh no, I want to play Hotline Miami. I ain't saying shit to nobody. I'm, well, somebody squealed. Or somebody was doing their job, and you know, maybe they're a whistleblower, or maybe there was just someone in the Australian offices, the government that, that saw it. But but yeah, for it to sit there for as long as it did is is uh, way beyond silly. Yeah, as Dex says in the chat, Australia does have an R18 classification, but it still can't get rated. That means they think it's above and beyond an R18. It's like our NC-17 or adult-only 
uh, for movies and video games, respectively. Well, one thing you got to remember uh, about that, too, is the higher up you go, a lot of companies don't want to deal with those ratings because it's it restricts your sales. And yep. it, it definitely hurts your sales because, obviously, I mean, people can scoff at it, but a lot of companies go for a more mainstream audience and a lower rating because they then are there's more more people are open to buying it you know whereas if you get those those harsher ratings your you know your audience dwindles significantly we've seen it absolutely because they you know look at all the venom movies from sony it's being kept at r at, at pg13 because they want more people to see it and the the movies suffer for it that's why deadpool has been so successful because they've been true to the character and kept it as an r jeremy any comment on this whole fiasco no, no real comments for me. Um, I've never played uh, Hotline Miami or Hotline Miami 2, but I do think it's ridiculous that it was on there for an entire year. <laughs> that is, like you said, negligence. That's it's just crazy to me. Yeah, Dex says uh, it was a parent who caught their kid playing it. Good job, Dang, parents. That kid, that kid's <laughs> never going to live that down at school. Hey, I, I don't think he's exactly going out telling people, hey, my parents got it kicked off the PlayStation Network. Hey, get, oh, they'll, oh, they'll know. They will know. <laughs> they, they, somehow, someway. Kids always Ruined know. For an entire country. They find out. That kid's going to grow up to be a narc now because his parents are narcs. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah. because when we were initially we were talking about the story, I'm like, wait a minute. They just released that game? I've seen it on PlayStation Network now for a long time, so... Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Well, it's Australia, and we know things are a little weird there when it comes to ratings. And and I'm not ju- I'm not trying to be, uh, you know, sassy. It, it's Australia has very interesting, um, restrictions on protective. media. Protective. Very, very protective. Some may say overly so. Um, you know, a couple of years ago, there was certain categories of porn that were getting banned, and stuff that you wouldn't think is very, you know out there so just be considered i have i have a theory i think that they were the australians were so busy fighting off giant spiders and poisonous or venomous snakes i should say <laughs> they didn't they didn't have time to to check to see if hotline miami 2 was rated or not and if it should be on the playstation network uh you'll have to let me know what you agree with dex i'm not sure i i spot a lot of shit um so next up you know that awesome metal gear solid delta game that's coming out well, evidently, the new camera, which is now they have an over-the-shoulder third-person camera, made the game too easy. So, therefore, Konami is bumping up the difficulty. Uh, Ryan Disdell. Hey, hey. Sorry. You all right? No, your, your notes on this one kind of aggravated me a little bit. But it's fine. It, finish and then I'll... Okay. So, for those of you who, who can't see my notes... Basically, they add that by adding in the third person view to the popular remake uh, reportedly made the game too easy because it was allowing people to run and shoot at the same time. And while in the new mode, so there's two different cameras you can play, two different methods of, of playing with different camera views. They have the legacy, which is the static camera top down view, kind of like you traditionally get from. Metal Gear Solid games, uh, or they have the new mode, which is the over-the-shoulder uh, mode. And what's happening was, in the old game, you could still move and shoot, but targeting and hitting moving characters or NPCs was designated as very difficult. With the over-the-shoulder camera, it's making it a lot easier. So, Tricky, please let me know what part of my notes are aggravating you, because obviously they're aggravating Will as well. <laughs> Me and Will stand side by side in this fight. No, it's because everybody always complained in the Metal Gear games how you couldn't move and shoot. And I always thought that added to the mystique of the game. Because you, it, the whole game is built on stealth. Metal Gear has never been an action game. It's always been a stealth game. Before you move on, because there's a very specific section in Metal Gear Solid and Metal Gear Solid 4 where you're on the back of a Humvee 
using a gun to fire away at everything going up. No, no, what's Metal Gear Solid 4? You were on a on a bike or something like that. Anyway, there are three, plenty three of... you were on a bike. No, I, it, I never played 3, but I know in Metal Gear Solid 4, there's a section you're going through town where um, Raging Raven is attacking you and you're firing away oh, okay. at everything going on. Okay, up. yeah, you're, you're right, you're right. So, you're right. yes, predominantly stealth, but there's a lot of action that happens in these games. What I mean, okay, outside of the sessions you're talking about, outside, I mean, the game, you have to move from area to area stealthily. And I thought if you're caught, the fact that you have to stand there and either battle with Q, uh, CQC or you had to, uh, you know, use a, a weapon to get your way out of it, I thought they added to the mystique of the game. A lot of people argue and say, well, like it, like in this case, they're saying they're, they're wrapping up the difficulty because the third-person view makes it easier. The third-person view doesn't make the game easier. You still have to be stealthy. It may be easier to shoot the enemy, but you still are built on stealth. So when I say your notes aggravated, it wasn't because I was you were making um, a statement with the notes. It's just... The, the fact that people are saying they they had to add they had to make the game harder because the, the third person view makes the game easier that's what aggravates me not that what you not not that you're like giving your opinion and that's what pissed me off okay the game I love three arguably it, a lot of people say it's their favorite Metal Gear game it's not mine mine was always five um Whoa, what, five? Really? I'm su- I'm surprised by that. Five is my favorite one. I I never played. Well, no, I played Peace Walker, but I never finished it. Um, but I I've always wanted to go back and do that. I just keep forgetting about it. But uh, five is my favorite one. A lot of people like three. I get aggravated when people go, "Oh, this feature makes the game easier." Shut the fuck up. If it's easier, then it's easier. Just put on a harder difficulty because playing any of those games on big boss mode is fucking insane. And anybody who does that, you have my utmost respect because those games are incredibly hard. Sorry, Jeremy, you were you were a little outraged. I said five. Was I'm my shocked. Favorite. I'm shocked by five. I just for me, it's always been the original Metal. Well, Metal Gear Solid uh, on the PlayStation. That was always my favorite one. But uh, three was. I know everybody everybody swears that three is their favorite. That's probably my least favorite, oddly enough. Yeah. Yeah. Uh I'm shocked that Tricky said five because that's the one where Hideo Hideo Kojima got kicked out the door. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well what okay, so the game technically was unfinished. And because the, he only finished the first two acts before they shoved the game out the door, which I thought was a fucking crime. But you know, I, I'm not going down that path again. The third act was uh, included in the game, but it was a cutscene and explained a lot of things. Five. Graphically and mechanically. I think is the best game. And. Without spoiling it. The ending of five. The end of the second act reveals something that I think is so paramount to the entire series. So, um, out, well, can I take a Matt guess? Out, go ahead. Norman Reedus is Snake Son. No. <laughs> um, I mean, hey, look Alex, at the two. Never- Would you not believe it? Would you not believe it? Look at the two. Alex, you're never going to play the game, and Matt, you don't care, right? Nope. Yeah, I'm never. I I tried. I'm sorry. I tried, and I just can't get behind that brand of stealth. Okay, so Jeremy, you finished five, correct? I did not finish five because it upset me. <laughs> okay do you Do you mind if I spoil? No, the by all means, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, so at the end of five, you find out that you were not playing as Big Boss the entire time. You were playing as Big Boss's duplicate because at the beginning of five. You'll remember this, Jeremy, if you started the game. Yep. Snake gets blown up. Correct. And then the very next thing is you wake up in a hospital and a doctor is taking care of you. And you wake up thinking you are Big Boss. For because sure. they programmed you to believe you are Big Boss. 
you go through the entire game thinking you're Big Boss, and there's only two people, or excuse me, there's only one person that knows you're not really Big Boss, and that's uh, Master Miller. Because the way it ties back is if you guys ever played the NES games, in the first game, you kill Big Boss. Like, he's dead. But then, in the second game, Big Boss is back. And they never really explained it. So, tying all the games together, what it turns out is the character, the Big Boss that you play in as five, is actually the Big Boss from the original NES game. And the Big Boss that you find at the end of four is actually the real Big Boss that happens to be at the end of the original Metal, uh, the second Metal Gear game. So it ties it all back in, and it's sto- the story arc explains so much. Then you find out how Liquid, Solid, and Solidus all came to be, who they were, who their mother was, and all that other stuff. So, 5 is definitely the, the, my favorite one of all time. I'll agree with you that it has the best graphics and gameplay by far, um, but on a story, maybe I should just go back and try to replay it, but on a story note, I mean, just one, one and two were always, always my favorite. I was, I was, I remember being very upset though, as a, as a kid playing as Raiden the first time. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I, cur- I cursed at my screen. One had a simplicity to it that the others started to lose as it went on. Agreed. Uh, it, I, I couldn't get into it, but Jeremy, what do you feel about the the whole? They made it harder because things they the new camera view made it easier, so to speak. Uh, well, I'm I'm at a point where I'm tired of developers feeling as though they need to make games easy or make the well. I mean, if it's game if the game's meant to be hard, then it's meant to be hard. I think it should be left alone. Kind of like in the in the realm of like the the Dark Souls games and stuff like that. Like if it's meant to be difficult, it should be difficult. You know, we. I don't know the whole get good thing that <laughs> rings true. I guess here to me. Okay. Uh, did we hit everybody, Alex? Did you give your opinion? Uh, you know, personally, I. You know, these days, I I think that. I, I don't know. It's just to me, like I would rather have a better experience, a more fun gameplay experience than something that's wickedly hard. You know, I don't I don't play Dark Souls. I don't play the From Software games a lot because of that reason. I don't care about my games being brutally hard. I mean, I want a challenge, but, you know, I, I'm not like, oh, I need my game to be punch me in the dick hard or some shit like that, you know? So I, mean, I would rather if the camera angle adds to the game and it makes it more fun i would rather have that you know if it, it makes it more run and gun and they don't want metal gear solid to be that i can understand if they want to tear, tear, turn it back a little bit so it's more of a gameplay style say that's that's more stealthy but you know who's to say it's easier like why why did i just don't know how they decide how it makes it easier um again just make just make a good game make the best game you can and you know Change up the mechanics if you want to, but I, I personally, I'm never disappointed when a game isn't, like, I'm disappointed if a game is just like, you know, press X to win or some shit like that. But I'm I'm never disappointed if I go through a game and it's not just ball-bustingly hard. I, I just don't care at this point, you know? Just trying to enjoy my time away from the real world. So, for me, it, this whole focus on oh, you know, the camera angle in this particular game, it, it just makes it too easy, so we gotta change shit. Like, who who cares? You know, that's that's my thing. Okay. All right. And moving on to our last article of the night, uh, Will and Chad, if you're listening, this, this ventures into your area. And coming from Press Start, Shannon Grixie talks about how uh, Little Big Planet 3 and all of its DLC... Uh, come October 31st, will no longer be available on the PlayStation Store. And that's including DLC from, uh, I guess there was one and two. There was a pack that you can get for three. So currently the game is 25 bucks. And again, this is affecting really the digital version only. So collectors like Will may see a little bump in their physical version values. And, you know, I, I, I didn't really read into or see why they said it was leaving 
but definitely the devs came out with a note talking about how this was kind of the culmination of all their work on, on those games, uh, you know, before little big planet adventure or whatever that was on the PS five. But we kind of know the zeitgeist that surrounded these games was that it was giving players the tools to create things that they wanted to, to share with others. And little big planet three was, was their swan song to that category. So, I remember trying, I think, Little Big Planet 1, and I don't have that type of creative bone. I did pretty well with Mario Maker, but with something that had a level of complexity to it, such as Little Big Planet, I just wasn't getting into it. So, Jeremy, do you ever play those games? Any, you know, did you go through any of them? Um, I played them a, a very little. Um mainly um friends of mine had it and i would just come over and kind of play with play along with them because it's a good multiplayer game um i did get into um uh, the latest game what is that uh the platformer um crap tearaway no, no sack uh, boy's big adventure sack boy yeah i got into okay. playing that and i was loving that and was actually aiming to platinum that game and i ran into the i think it's the knitted I can't remember exactly what the trials were at the end of that game, but that was much, uh, much like the, the Astrobot experience where I was ready to physically harm someone if they came near me because that game pissed me off so much. <laughs> I about put a controller through the wall there and I, yeah, no, like you said before, Alex, like no game is worth like raging over. <laughs> Not to that extent anyway. So I kind of gave up on that one, but. Yeah, I don't know. As for Little Big Planet Three, though, I've never really, you know, don't have a ton of experience with that one. Alex, how about you? Yeah, I mean, this Little Big Planet. I tried the first game. I played the first game, and I played Little Big Planet Karting, which is a very different experience than you know all the other Little Big Planet games. But I'm, you know, with Little Big Planet when I played it, I pretty much just played the levels the developers made. I didn't really make my own, or I didn't, I didn't go further than I had to to say earn a trophy. Uh, but I don't want to invest the amount of time it takes to build the world, to build a level. You want me to design a character in, uh, in a video, in like a wrestling game. You want me to make my own hero where I got to figure out what they look like, what they're wearing, you know, Rocket League, you want me to design a car? Cool. I'm, I'm great with that. You know, something takes me 20 minutes or less, but when you get to get into the, like the nitty gritty of designing like a level and then posting that on you know, up on for other people to look at or to, you know, uh, download themselves. You know, I did Hot Wheels Unleashed, you know, they had a track creator in that and I didn't use that at all. I Like I said, I would use, I would build very rudimentary tracks if I had to, you know, get a trophy or get what. Get a trophy. Yeah, exactly. But I, I mean, I enjoy collecting the cars, but I didn't, and racing the cars, I didn't want to build stuff though. That I don't want to spend that much time. I like having games made for me. I don't like having to build those worlds myself because it just takes too much time and I don't, I guess my focus just gets lost while trying to do that. So any bit, any level I've built in Little Big Planet would be just basically uh, the 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 finish would be with the start essentially because I I'm I'm not going to build a whole big level that takes hours to make because I just that's not how I enjoy playing a game you know that's not the kind of creation that I enjoy so okay tricky sorry you caught me in mid uh, crunch bunch um you mentioned about why they're closing down the service is because the service have actually been offline for quite a while um, because they were hacked and people were making racist and homophobic levels in, within the game. Uh, so they actually shut down the service a while ago. This is just them sunsetting the game entirely because they can't get it back. So um, I, I like the little big playing games, but I, I realize they're not for everybody and, and you know, just like the, the panel saying here, I think that aspect of building the levels was just an entry level way of getting people in that are interested in level design and video game marketing and stuff like that. They're not marketing, but development to get their foot in the door to understand this is what it takes to put a level together. And they expanded that inside of dreams because we saw some incredible games made in dreams. Um, I realize it's not for everybody. I, I do like the the uh, 
Sackboy games, the Sackboy Adventure games, uh, when they took out the level of creating, because I thought it was just better. Um, Sackboy did have the potential to become the new Sony mascot, but it, unfortunately, I think it's Astrobot now. So, I do like the games, uh, but it's sad that this is going away. Um, also, I, I, I want to touch back on the uh, Metal Gear story for one second. Jeremy will get this. Jeremy, when remember when everybody was upset that uh, Keith Sutherland took over the voice of Snake? Yes. That is, the reason with him being the original Big Boss, that's why he took over the voice, because Big Boss and Snake were the same DNA, so they had the same voice, but because the Big Boss in 5 was not the original Big Boss, that and it was an entirely different person, that's why he had a different voice. Okay, well, that makes sense, then. Uh, yeah, I, I, everybody just wants to hear David Hayter, so... I, right. I but, feel like that's a convenient story made up after the fact. I remember there being a lot of contention about David Hayter not being brought back. Well, David Hayter was one beat vocal about that, but David Hayter did know the story because he wasn't involved in the game. But that is, I mean, it's never been confirmed that that's the reason, but that's my theory is he was not Big Boss's DNA, therefore he had a different voice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like you said, likely story. <laughs> a <laughs> little, little convenient, but, but we'll go with it. Who, who the hell knows what happens in Kojima's mind? Okay. I don't think Kojima knows what happened. Well, no, maybe Norman Reedus knows what's happening in Kojima's mind. Or or Jeff Keighley. One of those two. All right. Those two should just get married already. I mean. <laughs> All righty. Well, that is the end of our stories, but we do have some listener questions. Time to check my social media. Yeah. So, Matt, before you go. Jeremy, I asked every guest, what do you think about that soundbite? You love it, hate it? Um, I'm kind of undecided, to be honest with you. <laughs> I don't hate it. I mean, I I was actually kind of looking forward to hearing it for the first time, like, on the show, being a part of the show, so. I, I do it more, more, more or less now just to piss off Joseph Priestley. He's my mortal enemy. <sighs> Everybody's got to have a good foil. So, um, first question come from our boy, Willie Shelty. Other than Matt, do any of y'all play games just for the sheer pleasure of playing the game and not trophy hunting? And I know we kind of hit on this topic a little earlier. So, Jeremy, you want to reiterate your position on what your your current gameplay purpose is now? Uh, my current gameplay purpose is to uh, solely enjoy uh, the games that I'm playing. I'm not a big completion person. I mean, I don't know that I ever really was. I mean, I kind of really, I mean, if you can tell by, I think my completion percentage is like a 27 or something like that. Like as for trophies, um, I used to be, uh, you know, more into it than I, than I currently am. I mean, now I just want to play I with what little time I have, because I am a dad, I am a husband. Um, so, you know, the time that I do have, I want to be playing, the best version of the game with the highest frames and the best fidelity and all that stuff. I mean, so I've kind of strayed away a little bit from the PlayStation um, and I've gone more towards the PC and I know that upsets, upsets some people, but um, I mean, Damn you. it doesn't upset the, the right people. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to be the guy in here yelling PC master race. I'm not that guy, but uh, I'll be that guy for you. <laughs> Fair enough. I, uh, but yeah, I mean, I don't, I, it's just not a big priority to me anymore. I want to play games and enjoy them and not have to worry about, you know, yeah, you know, a trophy, you know. And, and I think it's safe and fair to say, you know, the guys definitely do play games. I mean, Tricky, you, you play the division. You're not getting trophies in those anymore. Well, that's exactly why I told, I answered, uh, I answered the way I did in the in the Facebook chat, and Will, you know, decided to be a little smart. saying, "I don't believe you." Uh, yeah, I play the division. I have, I think, close to three thousand, if not more than three thousand hours in that game, and I haven't earned a trophy in that game in five years, six years. How long the game's been out? Yeah, I I play games all the time, but don't worry about the trophies. 
And Alex, certainly you play games for enjoyment too. It's not all about the trophies, right? <laughs> you speak for yourself, sir. Um, no, I mean, <laughs> I've had the all, the platinum trophies and 100% in Rocket League and Helldivers for a while now. Obviously Rocket League longer, but I mean, I still play those games just for the pure enjoyment of it. Uh, I, you know, the entire reason I played wanted to play Resident Evil 4 is because I had heard so many good things about that game and I started playing Resident Evil at Resident Evil 5. So it's a game that obviously I wanted to go back and play. I knew the trophy list. I saw the trophy list. I knew I probably wasn't going to get the Platinum Trophy because I, I knew ahead of time that some of them were going to be more difficult for me to get. But I still went ahead and played it anyway just because I wanted to play it. So that's a more modern example of a game that I played regardless of the trophies. And then the entire reason I own a Switch is because I enjoy Nintendo's games. But also in Nintendo's games, I don't have to worry about trophies. I talked about Luigi's Mansion 2. I still need to play that, but that has no trophies. And then also, uh, we're gonna, like Matt... We're probably going to be buying the new Mario Party, Mario Party Jamboree. No trophies. So, I, you know, that's the Mario Party games are another series that I play regardless of the trophies. So, um, yes, I do enjoy getting trophies in the games that I play on the PlayStation Network. But also, there are times when I will play a game despite the trophies, even if I don't think I'll get the Platinum Trophy or 100%. And, you know, like, on, like I said, Nintendo Switch, it's nice to play games on there because, you know, it's not about the trophies. It's just about enjoying the games. So why are you so scared to play Tunic then? Because I saw videos of Tunic and I just didn't know if I would like the gameplay. Mm-hmm. I don't think Tunic mm-hmm. is a particularly hard platinum trophy, from what I understand. Mm-hmm. I just I just mm-hmm. saw the gameplay and I'm like, you know what? I may not actually like that after all. So, not saying and Tunic's a bad game. I just it doesn't. I saw it and it didn't really incite, excite me all that much. And I agree with Saber and Chat talking about Mario Party games. They're for friends and family. They're enjoyable, but there's really no fun fun to be had playing them by yourself or with strangers except when some of them do have collectible stuff that you want to get uh by just by playing the game however you know those jackbox jackbox party pack games things like that all meant to be having fun with the people that are close to you i would say that they're the the jackbox party pack games are, are easier on the relationships than the mario party games because the mario party games as we all know somebody's gonna throw down when you steal their star because they're well, not that's... gonna be too happy it's because bullshit dice make freaking oh, other people. Oh, here, here come the, here come the bullshit excuses. It's, if the dice did what I wanted to them, I, there, I would have no problem with the game. Sure, blame me on the dice. That's your skill. I, That's- I do. Um, you know, this goes back to my philosophy in gaming. I probably have the most gaming ADD out of this group in that if a game, if I'm not feeling a game or if I stop having fun for even a second, I will jump to another game. I buy new games and jump to them without even finishing other games. But I'll generally go back at some point if I feel it's worth it. You know, I've got Black Myth Wukong sitting in my backlog right now, and I had fun. But there's times that I'm not willing to play such a challenging game. Other times, I want something more complex. I'll jump back into MechWarrior 5. I got MechWarrior 5 Clans coming out this Wednesday or Thursday. I'm going to buy that right off the bat because I love me a MechWarrior game. And like I said, if a game just stops being fun, then there's no reason for me to continue playing. I'm not sitting there measuring the dollars and cents going, oh, I spent a lot on this game. I should finish it. No, if it's not enjoyable for me anymore, I'm just going to stop. And again, it's fun to get trophies when they naturally occur through gameplay. And I don't mean by walking into a room and it going, hey, you walked into the cargo hold. Here's a trophy for you. I want it to happen with things you do in the game that might naturally occur over time or that you could possibly stumble upon. That's what I think a good trophy is. And unfortunately, with the requirement that all games have trophies and achievements, it just makes for some piss poor trophies and achievements that that are out there. And I'm just not buying into that. And then final question of the night. Um, Oh, and I'm sorry, Saber does say something more in chat. Let's not forget the Quizette games for PS3, which were unbelievably fun and brought back up in the Astrobot. I, I never played those games. Does he mean the the Buzz Quiz Trophy? Or Buzz Buzz, Buzz Quiz TV, I think. The one with the, the buzzers? Well, yeah. You'll have to tell us, Saber. They had a yeah, peripheral buzzer and it had the guy with the blonde hair and the glasses and the, yeah. He says yeah. yes. Yeah, those, those games were fun. Okay. And final question of the night comes from George Smith. What are your best out of the gate DLC ideas for games? For example, Power Wash Simulator recently got the Shrek DLC 
cleaning up various Shrek locales like the Swamp or the Dragon's Lair. Uh, Jeremy, I'll give you a little bit of time to go into this. Uh, Tricky, you'll start first. I, I need to know, maybe I'm not understanding, what does he mean by best out of the gate DLC? Because the Shrek came after the game. So out of the gate, I think he means like at launch. No, I, I don't think he means at launch. I just, at, at I, launch I, I just think DLC. he means... I just think he means like DLC is released. What's the best kind of DLC that that is out there? I I, I think the Rag, uh, God of War Ragnarok uh, Valhalla DLC was pretty good. Um, I'm a little biased, but I think the Division content was pretty good. Um, I'm trying to think of other games that I played that uh, had good DLC. The the Spider Man, uh, the original Spider Man. Our games from uh, Insomniac, I thought they were good. Um, trying to think of anything else that was good out the gate. I can't really think of anything right out the gate that was good. That I like. I mean, obviously games with their DLC, it's pretty good. Uh, Assassin's Creed, uh, various games had good DLC out the gate. Some of them flopped, um, obviously. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll leave those as my answers. I, th- I, I, I think by far the, the Valhalla DLC for God of War was the best one so far. Okay. Sorry. I, uh, ended up losing my headsets for a little bit, but you're, you're good. Tricky. You're done. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Alex, how about you? Well, Tricky goes with the gods of Norse mythology and I'm going to go with the gods of Egypt because the best DLC I've ever played is the curse of the Pharaohs DLC for, uh, Assassin's Creed Origins. Phenomenal DLC. Um, spectacular. I, I loved every minute of it. Um, getting to go through the Valley of the Kings and then going into different tombs and then transporting yourself into the idealized afterlife of that specific uh, ruler and like what they oversaw. Like they like the, the visions that played out and how they displayed everything and how they presented everything was phenomenal. So Ubisoft did a great job with that DLC. Actually, my favorite part of origins or any really any assassin's creed game i thought it was spectacular i also want to call out of course i do appreciate like when they bring new characters to like shred revenge like you know mondo gecko and mona lisa casey jones all that um and when they they do the crossovers in rocket league obviously nightmare before christmas is a huge one for me um but another great dlc i've always thought that and i don't mean any to, to like any disrespect when I say this, but I've always thought the the Remedy games were better played in DLC chunks than full games because I just, I feel like when you take in their full games in a very specific amount of time, like a, like a week, two weeks, a month, I feel like so much gets thrown at you and they don't always explain stuff very well or they get really esoteric that it gets at some point you get kind of lost in the woods, kind of like, you know, like you're Alan Wake in the middle, in the middle of nowhere. But I think their DLCs, the Foundation, Alter World Events, um, and then the, the one DLC for uh, the Night Springs DLC for Alan Wake 2 is so much better to just play them in small chunks because I feel like you don't get as lost. There's not as much minutia. There's not just, you don't, um, uh, maybe a poor analogy, but you don't have to swim as far to shore. Like, it's just, I enjoy them. And they're just enough of those franchises to make me enjoy it. Whereas with a lot of other things, I think they get way off base and they go further than they should. And they just kind of lose me in a lot of situations, even though I did like Control. I did like Alan Lake 2. I just feel like smaller sections of it, they're better able to explain it or kind of corral their worst instincts where they just kind of spiral off into areas they don't necessarily need to. That's just my thoughts. But I always thought that the the Remedy DLCs for their games were really, really good. And I actually enjoyed them better than the, the games themselves. Or at least they were the best parts of those games. Okay. Uh, Jeremy, you got any ideas? You want me to go first? Um, yeah, some of, some of my favorites, I would I would say, over the last few years, I would definitely include uh, the DLC for The Witcher 3, uh, The Blood and Wine and The Hearts of Stone. I thought they were really good. Um, while I haven't got to try it, yet at all because i'm not very good at the game i've been trying to get into elden ring and try to play i bought the the shadow of the herb tree i haven't gotten to it yet or haven't played anything but i'm excited to finally get there eventually um and there's another one oh and uh i always enjoyed the the left behind dlc for the last of us 
just to add that little bit of story there, you know, to kind of fill that time gap in the game. I always thought that was well done. Okay. I, I'm I'm ashamed I didn't even think of that. That that's a good that's a good DLC. So yeah, and when I think of of DLC, I'm looking for something that adds more to either gameplay or the story. So you know, gameplay, I think of something like Ragnarok, where it gives you a reason to come back to a single player game, and when especially when that DLC is free, it, it's just even better. But then I also like the DLC that comes to a game that gives you more reason to play the game. And I, I go back to my flagship series of Monster Hunter. Both Monster Hunter World and Monster Hunter Rise both introduced new or returning monsters as part of DLCs that were rolled out over time. So as you were playing the game, as time went on, even if you defeated all the monsters, you got all of your armor sets and all the weapons you wanted, new monsters were coming up, giving you reasons to come back to the game. So to me, that was just a genius move by Capcom to keep players engaged in those series. Not that they really needed a reason. Most Monster Hunter players put hundreds of thousands of hours into, uh, hundreds, two thousands of hours, I should say, into their games. So it's free DLC, more reasons to play, theme DLC like, like, uh, like was being said. So it's always good when, when DLC makes a game come back. I remember the blood and wine expansions for, for Witcher three. Now I never completed Witcher three, so I didn't feel compelled to buy the DLCs, but from what everybody said for the price you paid and what you got, it was well worth it. Same with shadow of the earth tree. I think you'll, you'll find it pretty good. I, I gotta go back and keep plugging away on myself but the uh, it's expansive for the price you pay and what you got. It's basically Elden Ring 2 is what people said about it. So that is um, the end of the listener questions. And with that, there's really not much else that we got to do. So we'll... I, I do have an update, though. Um, I did put the uh, Ghostbusters Spirits Unleashed uh, thing inside of our uh, <coughs> Facebook group for uh, for us. And Yield is now confirming you can play it offline and you can play with, with bots. You don't need other people and you don't need online to play it. Excellent. Okay. Alrighty. So uh, with that said, we move on to closing out the show. Jeremy, would you like to start off with your shout outs, please? Yeah. Um, well, first of all, I'd like to uh, shout out all of you guys for having me on. I truly appreciate it. Like I said, I've been a listener for a very, very long time. Never thought I'd be able, I never thought I'd be included. So again, I appreciate that. Um, shout out to my wife, shout out to my three kids. Uh, I am just got back from vacation. I'm looking forward to get back to work though. I mean, that sounds crazy, but uh, yeah. My children have drained me. So, but yeah, shout out to them. <laughs> okay. Alex? I give a shout out to the listeners, the fuel to the fire that is Trophy Horse. Tremendous people like Jeremy. Um, we appreciate you all so very much because really it's, it's the, the fuel that keeps us going. Um, a shout out to Jeremy himself for coming on. Um, you know, you say that uh, you were happy to be on the show, but you also gave up part of your evening on your way back to work from vacation to uh, to join us. So we definitely appreciate you coming on, sir. And I'm sure it will not be the first and last time that you are on. Um, I'm sure we'll have you on again. I uh, want to give a shout out also to Tricky and to Matt for joining us tonight and to Yield, who is uh, watching his Bengals um, and also answering our question about Ghostbusters at the same time, multitasking for us. Last but not least, give a shout out to my awesome and loving girlfriend, Ashley. I love you, hon. And uh, yeah, I'm going to shoot it off to somebody else. Tricky? Uh well just give an update on the Bengals because they're playing the Giants. Bengals are currently up seven nothing in the second quarter. And uh the goddess is a Mets fan. Um and she's watching the Mets game and they're losing three to nothing in the top of the third. So um Jeremy, are you a hockey fan? I am a hockey fan. I am a Boston Bruins fan. Did you see that bullshit that happened in the last night's Rangers game? I did not. All right, we we don't need to go into this. This is a video game oh, podcast, no, and I'm oh, editing. No, I'm just no. I'm just I, I I'm doing my sports. No, wrap you're no, you're no, not. Wait. No, wait, you need to wrap up. 
No, the, the, see, here's the thing where I need to start getting into this because, you know, last week it was wrestling. Now it's hockey. Uh, I, I'm putting an end to this. Yeah. All right, you, Tricky, you guys, go through you, your shout outs. We can talk to Jeremy post show, but you're not bringing this up and extending I, the show I anymore. Ha- I was half joking. <laughs> the last thing you want to do is get me started on wrestling, too. So, yeah. Oh. Tricky, your <laughs> shout outs. Shout out to the bullshit Utah hockey club that cheated their way to a win last night. Um, it was bullshit. You can go back and watch the highlights. Uh, shout out to the Yankees. Shout out to the Mets. Shout out to the Goddess. Shout out to Sweet Mama D. Shout out to everybody. Shout out to Jeremy, who I finally tried to. I finally got on the show. It's been about a month I've been trying to get you on the show. Um, he he went and braved the hurricanes on vacation to make it back to the show. So I greatly appreciate that. Um, and shout out to everybody that listens. Shout out to everybody in the chat. Saber. Uh, Dex was in the chat. Will was in the chat. Um, yeah, that's my shout outs. All right. Uh, shout out to you, Jensen. Absolutely, Jeremy. Would love to have you back. Uh, definitely great having you on and speaking with you here and your experience and your your knowledge about gaming. Really appreciate that. Shout out to uh, my fellow co-hosts, Tricky, Alex, and Yield. Hopefully uh, you enjoy your, your football game. Shout out again to the chat, Saber. Will and Dex. Shout out to Channel 3 community. Uh, hint, hint, wink, wink, Jeremy, if you need an invite to Channel 3, there's that. Channel3.gg is where you come to talk about games and speak about games and post about games and earn some XP doing all of those activities. So please be sure to stop on by Channel3.gg. We are well into Season 10 as far as the way things are going. So make sure to give that a look. And a very, very, very special shout out to my wife, V. And again, Jeremy, for you guys recently celebrating your anniversary, uh, for my wife and I celebrating our 12th wedding anniversary today, uh, she let me, uh, gave me the blessing more, so to speak, to come record with you gents tonight. So I really appreciate that. And thank you for everything you do. And with that said, Tricky. Happy trophy hunting. Later. song is Venus by the band Even off their album Zenith. Permission granted by the band and 12 Stone Records. You can find them on Facebook by going to www.facebook.com slash Even Philippines. 